Sorry, guys. Hello and good morning. How are you doing today? Melanie here teaching you for your Thursday class. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I had something in my throat there. All right, guys. So, who's in class today? If you are in the classroom, the virtual classroom, please say hello. It'd be nice to see who's here learning with us today. All right. So it's a nice sunny day here in Vancouver, sunny enough to even go for a walk. Hmm, there's a particular coffee shop I want to go to, but I don't know where it is. So what can I do if I don't know where a certain location is? Yes, I could look at my phone on Google Maps, but there's one other more social thing that I could do. I could ask for directions. Da, 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 da. So today, our focus for the first class is we're going to be working on grammar. This is a review of what you should have learned on Monday. Directional prepositions. So you know, turn left, turn right, go straight, go past. So we're going to be reviewing that for the first class. And <clears throat> we have a fun little map exercise. This is going to be great because you get to practice asking for directions and giving directions. Okay, so that's going to be the first class. Second class is going to be a listening exercise um, about how boys and girls deal with stress differently. So that should be interesting. And last class for our elective, we're going to be doing a breaking English quick little reading exercise. And it's going to be about, what was it about again? Oh yes, the best countries to raise kids in the world. What country do you think it is? You'll have to wait and find out. Okay guys, so let's start with our preposition hour. So please take out this handy dandy map here and not only that but I'd also like you to take a look at this. I'd like you to get this ready. So we're just going to review some of these prepositions quickly. I'm not going to go through every single preposition because it's going to take a long time but if there's anything on this sheet that I don't cover but you want to know more about it just type in hey Melanie what does onto mean? And then I'll explain it, okay? Okay, so first off, let's just practice. Uh, let's practice, let's practice asking for directions first. And we're kind of going to go through these as we practice going through. Okay, so let's practice asking for directions. Maybe you want to go to Starbucks. So you could say, Excuse me, where is the Starbucks? So you probably noticed I wrote where's. That's the lazy way um, of saying where is. Remember in English, when we speak, we're kind of lazy. We like to contract our word. Where is, where's. Excuse me, where's the Starbucks? All right, so you can practice speaking at home. Ready, set, go. Excuse me, where's the Starbucks? And here. Another way you can ask, excuse me, how do I get to Starbucks? It doesn't matter which one you use, both of these are totally fine. So try practicing, excuse me, how do I get to Starbucks? All right, so that's the easy part, asking for directions. Now comes the tricky part, giving directions. So let's pretend I have come up to you and I have asked you, where is the Starbucks? 
So this is where we're going to pull this out and practice some of our prepositions. Okay, so obviously, okay, so let's say our Starbucks is, so let's say Starbucks is up here. Starbucks, SB for Starbucks. Okay, so obviously, you know, we have, let's say we're starting here and we have go straight. So go straight means you're going to boop, 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 boop. You're just going to keep walking straight. And another way, let's see, we could say walk along. Okay, so go straight, it also is similar to walk along. So let's say this road's name is, we'll just call it Pender Street. So I could say, go along Pender Street, or you can just say go straight, but go along or walk along is very similar to go straight. But make sure when you say walk along, make sure you have a street name. Okay, and next, go past. I want you to pay attention to this here, go past or walk past. So maybe I'll say, go along Pender Street, walk past the school. So you're not going to stop at the school. You're going to boop, 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 boop. You're going to go past the school. All right. And here, um, I want to point this direction out here. Go over the junction. Now, this is a junction here, or we could even call it an intersection. So often cars will kind of drive around and this is where they can turn and go different directions. So if I say go over the junction, or you could even say go through the junction. So here's a little thing here, through. So that means you go whoop, you just kind of, you can go over or go through. It doesn't matter if you say go over the junction or go through the junction. All right. And what else? Okay, I think turn left and turn right is pretty obvious. Now, for example, let's say you want to go to the zoo. Maybe you don't want to go to Starbucks. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, walk along Pender Street, turn right at the junction. And that's where you get to the zoo. Okay, now, I would like to talk about describing location. So you've given your directions. Now you have to tell people where exactly the zoo or where the Starbucks is. Okay, so let's say we've talked about Starbucks. We walk along Pender Street. We go over the junction. And then let's see, we go past the town hall. Now I'm going to tell you, okay, the Starbucks is on your right. So you can see it's on our right here. The Starbucks is on your right. Now let's say you wanted to go to the post office. Where's the post office? So what are we going to do? We are going to walk along Pender Street. We're going to go past the school. We're going to go over the junction and then the post office is on your left. Yes, very good. Excellent. Okay, so on your left, on your right, that is a very common way to describe the location of something. Now, next we are going to talk about opposite. All right, so here we have our Starbucks. Now, so I've given you directions to the Starbucks. All right, so yeah, go through the junction, go over the junction and walk past the town hall. The Starbucks is opposite the post office or opposite of the post office. So opposite means they're kind of facing one another. So this is opposite. Let me see if I can draw a little picture here. So, boop, boop, boop. Okay, here's a road, Starbucks, 
and let's say this is a zoo. So, so this is opposite. I got a little picture here to kind of help you guys out. All right, now another one, let's see. So maybe you're still asking about the Starbucks. Okay, so we've gone through the junction, go straight. It's next to the town hall. It's next to the town hall. So that means beside. So next to, I'll draw a little picture for you here. Next to. So I'll give you a little, actually I'll give you a little visual hint for next to. Next to, you get it? So next to, one, two. Just a little funny way to remember it. <laughs> okay, and finally, it's in between blank and blank. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, what is between blank and blank? Okay, so I'm gonna draw a new picture here. So let's see, okay, let's get rid of the Starbucks. We're gonna change it up. So let's pretend we have three buildings here. Let's see, we got one building, two building. Okay, so let's pretend our Starbucks is here. And what should we put here? Let's put McDonald's. Okay, so we got post office, Starbucks, McDonald's. And so I'm describing where the Starbucks is. All right. So same directions, you know, walk along Pender Street, go over the junction. And what I will say is the Starbucks is in between the post office and McDonald's. So it's in the middle, in between. So I'll draw another little picture down here. Boop, boop, boop. And this is the building you're looking for in between. Okay. So this was a quick and dirty review of our directional prepositions. If you have any questions about these, or if there are if, if there is anything on here you want me to review, please let me know. If not, I think I would like us to get started and we're actually gonna do this exercise now. Woohoo! All right, so you're going to notice that there are two sides. We have student A and we have student B. So I would like you guys, uh, let's see, we have, okay, so let's pretend this is your board. So I'm gonna get rid of the Starbucks and the McDonald's. And okay, yeah, everything else is looking pretty good. And you guys are going to be student B. So this is the side I want you to look at. I want you to look at the student B side. I'm going to be student A, so don't look at the A side, okay? It's a secret. You guys are going to be B and your map is also up here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to fill in the blank buildings. So let me just draw in a few more shapes just to finish the map up. Okay. And we have another building over here and we have a building right here. And we got another building up here and one there. Okay, this is not Pender Street anymore. We do have something here though. Woo! And one more building up there. And, oops, we do have another building here. So we did have three buildings, my bad, my bad. Whoop. And a small building and then another building. Okay, so I think that I have completed the map. So now we are ready to fill in these blanks. We have about seven blanks. We don't have to fill them all in. We may not have time to finish this. Okay, guys, so student B. Now, what you are going to do is 
I want you to ask me a question. So, you're going to have to ask me where, let's see, number one, number one says, you're going to ask directions to the bus station. You have to ask me directions to the bus station. So, obviously, um, I can't hear you, but what you can do is type in the directions. So I'd like you to please type in directions to me. You can ask, excuse me, where's blank? All right, so I'm gonna let you type it in, or you can say, how do I get to? It doesn't matter, you can choose. All right, so I'm gonna let you type away. Ready, set, go. Typey fingers, type, type, type. And I'm gonna have some water. Okay, and I'm going to put these away for now. All right, any typers? Want me a little bit slow? That's okay. All right, so I don't see anyone typing yet, but that's all right. We'll do the first one together. So I was hoping that you guys would type in, where is the bus station? Or... How do I get to the bus station? I'm glad you asked. Okay, so now I'm going to give you directions. Are you ready? Okay, so the bus station, the bus station. Let's see. Okay, first you are going to go straight, walk past the bakery and you are going to turn right at the next intersection, or I guess we can call this a junction. So turn right, whoop, walk along the street, past, excuse me, walk past the intersection. So here's another intersection. Go past the intersection and, ooh, okay, this might be a little tricky. Let's see. Oh, no, it's okay. The bus station is next to the pet shop. All right. So where is the bus station in this picture? So is the bus station here or is it here? How about here? Is the bus station here? Yes, it is. So this is where the bus station is. So the bus station is next to the pet shop. All right, so I'm just going to write bus here. I'm going to be lazy. Let's just pretend it's a bus station, even though it says bus. Okay, guys, now it's your turn. You're going to have to give me directions, okay? So. All right, guys, let's see. What do I have to ask? Okay, so I think I already filled in the pet shop. So maybe, actually, yeah, I'm going to ask number one. Um, excuse me, how do I get to the pet shop? How do I get to the pet shop? Can you help me? So this is where I want you to type in directions okay go ahead you can type in the directions one at a time so you could say go straight send the direction turn right and then you can hit send okay so you don't have to type it all at once you can just type out one quick sentence send type out the next direction send okay go ahead so what's the first thing i have to do so i'm right here i want to get to the pet shop so what do I do? Pretend that I don't know. Pretend that I don't know this, okay? Just pretend. What do you guys think? Okay. Let's see. Okay, yes, yeah, someone has said go straight. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go straight. And what next? So I'm going straight. And what's going to happen? 
Okay, yeah. Go past the bakery. Good, thank you. And all right, so I've reached an intersection. What do I do? Do I keep going straight? Do I keep going over the junction? Or do I turn right? Okay, someone said turn right. Nice, okay, so I'm turning right. Turn right. And what's next? What do I do? Go straight. Okay, so I'm going straight. And then do I turn right at the intersection? What do I do here? Okay, so yeah, yeah I guess you could keep saying go straight, but maybe here you could say walk past the intersection. So I'm walking past the intersection. And then now what? What can you tell me? Where's the pet shop? Okay, someone said the pet shop is on your right. Nice. Okay, so the pet shop is on your right. Good stuff, guys. All right, so that's the first one. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to ask me a question. All right, so let's do number two. Number two, let's see, that's the bookshop. So you're going to ask me directions to the bookshop. So go ahead and type in your question, please. I'm sorry, I swallowed that water the wrong way. How very unladylike of me. <clears throat> All right. Okay, somebody has asked me directions to the bookshop. Nice, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. All right, so we're starting back here. Now, let me just erase these arrows. Okay. <coughs> okay, so what you're going to do is... I want you to, let's see, where is the bookshop? Oh, okay. This is very easy. All right, so here are my directions for you. The bookshop is on your left. <laughs> Can you figure it out? The bookshop is on your left. It's next to the bakery. The bookshop is on your left. So, is it here? Yes or no? No, it's not here. Is it here, next to the bakery? No, not quite. What about here? Yes or no? Yes, good, thank you. The bookshop is indeed right here. Easiest directions ever, woohoo, okay. So, I just gave you directions. Now, you have to give me directions. Let's see, where do I want to go? Um, okay, I want to go to the pub. I'm hungry. I want to eat some good old English food. So, guys, how do I get to the pub? Where's the pub? Can you help me? I have no idea where the pub is. Pretend that's not up there. But where is the pub? So we're going to start back here. <laughs> so what do I have to do first? OK, so someone said walk along the road. Yes, good. OK, so I'm going to walk along the road. OK. And what do I do here? Am I going to turn? Yes or no? All right. Someone said, no, that's right. So I'm going to keep walking along. And what now? Uh-oh, OK, so we reached the junction. Ooh, what am I going to do at the junction? What should I do? OK, what am I going to do, guys? What do you think? Let me just take a sip of water. Mm. Ooh, sorry, I'm getting a little bit sweaty, so pardon me with all the sweat beads coming down. All right, guys, I'm super hungry, 
I've uh, got a nice pub lunch waiting for me. How do I get there? What am I going to do next? Let's see. Oh, someone said turn right at the junction. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to turn right at the junction. And what next? So I'm, walk I'm at the junction. Uh, is it right here? Is this the pub? No, this is not the pub, right? So I'm going to, yes, okay, walk along the road. So I'm going to walk along the road. And now what? What can you say here? How can we describe where the pub is? Yep, yeah, someone said, the pub is on your right. Good, yes. Here we go. Pub, yoo-hoo. The pub is on your right. Nice, thank you. Um, so apparently I'm not supposed to know where the zoo is, but let's pretend I know where the zoo is. You could also say, the pub is next to the zoo. The pub is next to the zoo. That is another good way to describe it. Well done, guys. Good, good, good. Okay, how are we doing? Now, um, let's see. How are we doing for time? Uh, we got about 20-ish minutes left. Okay, so maybe we can do one or two more, and then we're going to move on to our next activity. Okay, so maybe instead of me... Um, instead of you asking, actually, okay, you can ask for directions one more time. So, let's see. You guys want to know where the bank is. Okay, so you're going to ask for directions to the bank. Okay, so go ahead and write down, write down your question. Go. And I will think of some ways to describe it to you. Okay. All right, good. Someone has asked, where is the bank? Thank you for asking. Okay, so here we are back here. Okay, this is easy because um, we just did this. So what I want you to do is walk along the road, go past the intersection. So go past the bakery, walk past the hotel, walk past the school. So I'm saying walk past, walk past, and turn right at the junction. Turn right at the junction. So that means you're going to whoop, turn right here and go straight. Or I could say walk along the road. The bank is on your right. It's next to the pub. I told you this would be easy. So the bank is next to the pub here? No, right? Next to the pub? Yes. All right. So this is where the bank is. Good. Well done, guys. Okay. Now you're going to give me directions. So now I'm going to ask you, let's see, where do I want to go? Um, excuse me. Where is the school? How do I get to the school? Can you help me out? I need to go to school. I'm running late. I'm late for my class. Where's the school? How do I get to the school? Oh my goodness. All right, so here we are. So how are you going to how are you going to point me to the school? Okay, so it's not very far, so this shouldn't be very difficult. Let's see. What do you guys think? Okay, someone said, go past the bakery and hotel. Good. Okay, so I'm going to walk past the bakery and the hotel. And am I going to turn left here? Yes or no? Mm, actually, there's, there's two ways you could do this exercise. So there's no, for this particular one, maybe there's no wrong way. So what should I do? Okay, so someone said turn left. 
Okay, so I'm going to turn left. And what's next? What now? So where is the school? Any thoughts? Okay, someone said the school is opposite the bakery. Nice. Okay, that works. Yes, the school is opposite the bakery. Or we could say the school is on your right. That is also a good way to say it. Nice. Okay. Good job, guys. Alrighty. So, I think that is good for now. I'm thinking maybe, perhaps, we could switch to this sheet here. So let's switch to this worksheet and we're going to spend the rest of the class working on more prepositions. We're going to be mainly, excuse me, focusing on in, on, and at. Those are three of the most commonly used prepositions. All right, so we're going to say goodbye to our map. Farewell. Do you guys ever get lost? Do you ever have to ask for directions? Sometimes I do. Usually I use Google Maps, but sometimes Google Maps doesn't work for me. So sometimes I have to go into a store and ask people for directions. Um, if I'm traveling, I can, it's easy to get lost, I find. I've had to ask for directions a lot when I was traveling. Oh my, this is a big map. A lot to erase here, hey? Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave that up there for now. I'm too lazy to erase it. Alrighty, so here we are gonna have, all right, so let's do a little review of our prepositions. We have in, do, 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 do. I just got these pens made the other day and they're already kind of running out. Okay, we got on, there we go, that's much better. Do, 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 do. And we have at, okay. So when we're talking prepositions, especially directional prepositions, these are the three prepositions that we use most often. And it can be very confusing to know when to use which preposition. Sometimes even I have difficulty explaining to, Eng to non-native English speakers, why do we use at instead of on? Why do we use in instead of on? It's a bit tricky, but there are some ways to tell the differences. So, in. When do we use in? What do you guys think? Okay, so someone said countries. Yes, so we can use it for countries. So for example, I live in Canada. And also for cities, countries, cities. So I live in Vancouver, Canada. Perfect. All right, countries and cities, often we use in. Um, when else can we use in? What do you think? Someone said buildings, and you can use in with buildings sometimes. So here, the idea is enclosed spaces. Okay, so this might be a bit of a funny sounding word. So enclosed spaces, that means like when you're in an area. So let's say for example, let's say we're at Starbucks, good old Starbucks. Now, so here's the door. And here's a table inside. And maybe this is you inside drinking your nice hot latte. So you're in the Starbucks. Like you've gone inside through the doors. You're in this building, like you're in a space. Right now, how about me? 
For example, right now I'm teaching in a classroom. So I'm in a space. I've got four walls around me. There is a door over there. So right now I am in the classroom. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this messy thing and I'm going to give an example sentence. So maybe I'm in the classroom. Classroom. So enclosed spaces, so rooms, buildings, your house, for example. Okay, now how about what else? There might not be too much else. Okay, we'll leave it here. If you have any more ideas for in, feel free to type them out. Um, what about on? When do we use on? What do you think? Someone said uh, road or street. Yes, very good. Streets. So you could say, I live on, what's a good street? Uh, Pender, because that's where the school is. I don't actually live on Pender Street. I live on Pender Street. Where else can we use on? What do you think? How about objects? Okay, or sur maybe surfaces. So for example, uh, I'm, I'm lying on the floor. <laughs> so, you know, you have a surface, so here's the floor. And then this is me lying on the floor. So I am on a surface. So I'm lying on the floor. So yeah, that can be used for surfaces. What else? That might be it for on. But if you have any other ideas, let me know. You can type them out. Finally, at, okay, this could be a tricky one. What do you think? Where is at? When do we use at? Okay, someone said buildings, good, yeah. So you might not be in the building, but you might just be outside, like next to the building. So buildings or businesses. Okay, so for example, I always buy coffee at Starbucks. I know I'm using Starbucks a lot in these examples. I don't even go to Starbucks that often. I don't know why I'm using Starbucks in the, as an example so much today. Go figure. Okay, so yeah, you can use it for buildings and businesses. So I always buy my coffee at Starbucks. Okay, let's meet at 10 o'clock at McDonald's. Time, yeah, time. So for time, so for example, let's meet at 10 o'clock. So we pretty much always use at for time. When else can we use at? Any other thoughts? So yeah, this might be good for now. Again, if you have any other thoughts, let me know. All right, so again, that was our quick and dirty prepositions. So I think that's enough review. Are you guys ready to do this? Okay, so your sheet's gonna look more blue and colorful, I think. I got the boring black and white version, but it should say prepositions of place on top. So please pull this out and we are going to do some of the questions in part A, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to complete the gaps. So fill in the gaps with in, on, or at. You have only three options. 
So you got a one in three chance of getting it right. Pretty cool, hey? Okay, so let's do number one. I, okay, this could be tricky, but let's see if you get it. I enjoy going for walks blank the countryside. Okay, so I'm going to erase the board just so we have some room to work with. So if you want to take any pictures, now's the time. I'll let you take a picture of this if you need to. So whip out your phones, flashy, flashy, clicky, clicky. Okay, so if you've taken your pictures, hopefully, I'm going to erase it now. I'm going to say goodbye to these prepositions. Okay, and clean this board up. Yay, we have space again. Woo! -hoo. Okay, so number one. So I'm only going to write out part of the question. I enjoy going for walks blank the countryside. Okay. So this is a bit of a tricky one. Well, let's see if you guys can guess the answer. Is it in, on, or at? So I'll write that up here. In, on, at. What do you guys think? So someone said, I enjoy going for walks at the countryside. Good try, but not quite. So this might be a bit of an exception. I enjoy going for walks in the countryside. So sometimes these are considered enclosed areas, even though it's outside, like the countryside, the forest, the ocean, like if you're swimming in the ocean, that's considered kind of an enclosed area. So sometimes it's not possible to memor get all the rules for these and you just might have to memorize some of these. Don't fret too much though. Practice makes perfect. Okay, number two. Okay, when I fly, I like to arrive blank the airport before check time, check in time. So I like to arrive blank the airport before check in time. What do you think? This could be a bit of a tricky one too. Um, what do you think? Any thoughts? Someone said at, and that is correct. Good, I like to arrive at the airport. Okay, so maybe I didn't go over this, but this is a particular point in your destination. So yes, you are going to go in the airport eventually, but first you have to get to the airport. So usually when you're talking about traveling to somewhere, you might say at the airport. So, Okay, um, I'm gonna catch the 10 o'clock bus. I should arrive at the airport at 12 o'clock. So usually when we arrive somewhere, we say arrive at. Okay, good, so arrive at the airport. Nice, nice. Okay, number three, I like listening to music. I like listening to music. Listening to music blank the car okay now think about where you are think about where you are when you're driving so here you are doo -doo -doo. here's a car now are you are you at the car are you in the car are you on the car? What do you think? Probably not on the car, right? And in, very good. Someone said in the car. I like listening to music in the car. Nice, very good. Okay, now here's an annoying rule um, and I cannot explain to you why the rule was created this way. We say in the car, but 
when we're talking about other forms of transportation, like the bus, the train, or maybe the ferry, and on the plane, airplane. So this is silly, but we don't say in. We say on. Now, please don't ask me why. I don't know who made these rules. This is a kind of a funny exception in English. So you will, you will encounter this a lot. It's easy to make this mistake. So I like listening to music on the bus, on the train, on the ferry, on the plane. So remember, if it's bigger than a car, it's going to be on. But if it's a car, it's going to be in. So just, just a little rule, try to remember it. I know it's kind of silly. English could be a bit silly with its rules sometimes. But just remember, small car, in. Bigger than a car, it's on. Okie doke. Now let's erase these and do the next few. All right. Now, Okay, we got about four minutes left, so we can do a few more of these. Let's do number four. Number four could be tricky. Okay, where do you live? I live blank the eighth floor. Okay, so someone lives in a building. Blank 25 Cambridge Road. Cambridge Road, blank Bristol. This is a city in England. Okay, so we got three prepositions. So I'll give you a hint. Each one is going to be used one time. You're gonna use all three of these, but where are you going to use them? That is the question. Okay, so I'll draw a picture to give you kind of a hint or an idea. All right, so here's this person and here's the building. Here is the eighth floor, eighth floor. And here is the address. The address is 25 and this is Cambridge Road, Cambridge road and he is in the city so this is bristol city so just pretend this is a city i know this looks like a bubble but let's pretend it's a city all right eighth floor 25 cambridge road bristol which prepositions do you think we are going to use all right, somebody said, I live on. Very good, I live on the eighth floor. So for floors in a building, we say on, because a floor is a surface. I live on the eighth floor and at 25, good. I live at 25 Cambridge Road. So for addresses, we're always going to use at. And that means we're going to say in Bristol because for cities, we usually say in. I live in Bristol. Okay. So for example, I could say I live on 1255 8th Street. Sorry, I live on the second floor on 1255 8th Street in New Westminster. So I just described my address to you. Not my real address, by the way. That was a fake address I gave you. So don't try to go looking for me. <laughs> All right, so yeah, those are the directional prepositions. So I don't think we have time for another one because I think we're coming up to our break pretty soon but I will prepare another question just in case. Maybe we will have time for one more question. All right, so number five, 
We're talking about being lazy at home. Okay. So when I'm, when I'm blank home, I like to sit. I like to sit blank the sofa. So, or the couch. Sofa is another word for couch. This is what I actually like to do this. Usually when I'm watching TV, I like to do this. So, when I'm blank home, I like to sit blank the sofa. All right. So, what do you guys think is going to be the prepositions that we're going to put in here? Any thoughts? Any opinions? Okay, someone said when I'm at home, and yes, very good. So this is a point, a location we're talking about. So when I'm at home, I like to sit, yes, on, very good. I like to sit on the sofa and watch TV or read a book. I sit on my sofa way too often, it's the best. My sofa is so comfy, I love it. Okay, so we have come up to our first break now. So that's going to be it for grammar and prepositions today. Woohoo! We are going to be doing our listening exercise next. So prepare this sheet for the next class. All right, so we will see you in 10 minutes, everyone. Have a nice break. See you soon.
Took a quick little look at my phone, texted my sister, saying good morning. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We are going to do our listening exercise. And as you can see here, the title is called Boys and Girls React Differently to Stress. All right, so let's do a little warm up. What is stress? Can anyone tell me what stress is? So when you hear the word stress, what springs to mind? So what do you think about when you hear this word? Like what does stress mean to you? Do you think it's like a happy, positive thing? Or is it kind of a negative, not so good thing? You can just type in any thoughts you have about stress. There's no right or wrong answer. Well, not really anyway. Yeah. So what does stress mean to you? All right. Yeah. Someone has said nervous. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Stress. It absolutely can make you nervous. For me, when I get stressed, I get really sweaty. <laughs> Sometimes I get sweaty. So that's another thing we could, that's another symptom of stress. How about anything else? Upset, good, yeah, someone said upset. Yeah, stress definitely can make people feel upset, maybe sad. So how about, like, what are some stressful things, like, is there anything that makes you feel stressed? What do you think? Uh, for example, sometimes for me, money can make me a bit stressed. If I don't have enough money to pay my bills, or if my credit card got a little too big, oh no, too much bills, like too many bills, uh, my credit card debt, student debt, then money can make me feel very stressed sometimes. Getting better at it though. Woohoo! Uh, someone said exams. Yeah, absolutely. Exams can be very stressful. That's a good word actually. So I'm gonna put, so stress is the noun. Stressful is an adjective. So yes, exams can be very stressful. How about making presentations, presenting in front of a lot of people? For me, that can be very stressful. I don't like it if a hundred people are looking at me while I'm talking. I really don't like that. So that makes me very stressful. Whew. Okay, so I think that's good for the warm up. All right, now let's do number two, stressful things. Okay, so here, Let's see, um, we got, how stressful are these things? Like, are they very stressful or are they so-so or not stressful at all? So let's see, what do we have? Let's get rid of the word bubble here. So for number two, let's see, we have, oh, we have exams. We just talked about that, ooh. Uh, so exams, those are the big tests at the end of your school year. When you finish your course in high school or university, you have to do a big exam. Usually it's like worth 30 to maybe 50% of your final grade. That's pretty big. So is that stressful to you? Do exams give you stress? For me, when I was in high school and university, they definitely gave me some stress, especially like one week before. I was like, oh my God, I have to study. I'm not ready. I'm gonna fail. Ah! It was pretty stressful for me. What about you? Are, is this very stressful? You can type yes or no or a little. So type it, let me know. What do you think? Are exams stressful to you? Now, now, how do we deal with exams? Okay, so someone said, yes, exams are stressful to them. Yeah, I feel you, I feel you, for sure. Okay, how can we deal with this kind of stress? So let's say you got an exam coming up in three days 
and let's say your exam is worth a whopping 50% of your grade. Oh my goodness. How do you deal with this stress? Like you're, you're nervous, you're obsessed, you're scared. So how, how can you feel better? What do you do? What do you do to lower your stress before an exam? You can type in any answers. There's no wrong answers here. So for example, um, what did I do before exams? Mm, sometimes I would go to a coffee shop to study because there was like a little bit of background noise and I could have a hot drink and relax. Coffee might not make you relax. I think I usually went for hot chocolate or tea or something decaffeinated because if I have too much coffee, I can get stressed. I'm like, Arr! so for me, I found going to a coffee shop, just having like a nice hot cup of tea or something without caffeine really helped me calm down. Taking a walk, taking a walk or going for a run would help me deal with exam stress. So that's what I would do. Let me know in the comments what you would do for exam stress. Okay, next, family fights. Uh-oh, this is a pretty serious one. <laughs> family fights, oh dear. Okay, so this could be between like, maybe there's fights between your mom and your dad or maybe there's fights between your siblings. Maybe you're fighting with your mom and your dad or you're fighting with your siblings. So family fights, yeah, definitely stressful for me, I think. But what do you think? Are family fights very stressful? Or are they just a little stressful or not stressful? Let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? So for me, I found family fights to be very stressful when I was younger. My mom and dad would argue quite a bit and sometimes they would raise their voices and ah! and shout and like bang the wall. And that made me very, very stressed, unfortunately. So, um, and sometimes I would argue with my sisters as most sisters do. They're gonna me, 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 me. They just argue with each other. And that, it made me a little stressed, but I was a bit of a jerk to my sister, so yeah. So, so I found this pretty stressful. So what did I do? Like, what do you do to deal with this? What do you do in a situation where you have to deal with family fights? Let me know in the comments what you do to deal with this stress. So when my parents, whenever they had an argument, um, usually I would go up to my room and hide under the bed. <laughs> that's kind of seems like a fun, kind of a funny way to deal with it, but it kind of worked for me. Or I would plug in my headphones and listen to music to calm me down so I couldn't hear them anymore. And I was like, ah, so I was able to de-stress from this, just plugging in some music to block the sound or reading a book. So those were my solutions to dealing with stress. But basically the number one thing was walk away from the fight. Stay away from that. All right, so if you have any stress solutions, let me know in the comments. Okay, next. Money worries. Money worries. So I talked about this a little bit. Is this stressful for you? Is it really stressful? A little bit stressful or not very stressful? So for me, um, this is, yeah, it's kind of stressful, not extremely, but for me, it's pretty stressful. What about you? Um, so especially a year ago, I had a lot of debt for being a student. Um, now I slowly, I'm able to pay it off a bit. So my stress is going down. So, my solution to money worries, slowly pay off debt. That's, that's my only solution I have. Let me know, type in the comments if you have any solutions for dealing with money worries, stress related to that. Okay, um, job, this is a good one. I think stress from your job, or you could even call it job stress. This could actually be considered a word in English. 
Many people say job stress, stress from your job. This is probably one of the most common forms of stress. Absolutely. So how about you? Is this very high on your stress level or is it medium stress or low stress? What do you think? For me, it's right now it's pretty low. Um, I think I got a pretty nice job. It's a low stress job. In the past, however, I had, I have had high stress jobs. For example, I used to work at a call center and had angry people talking at me and shouting at me. And that made me so stressed. So what do you do to deal with job stress? Do you guys have any ideas? What do you do? Me, um, what I would do for my job stress in the past, um, I would often go for a walk. Um, I like to go, I often went hiking and camping. So these were things that kind of on the weekends would get me far away from my job so I could relax a bit. Uh, what else? Sometimes I would you know, watch funny videos to make me laugh. Watch funny videos or movies. That helps me de-stress a lot. So I'll even do this today. Yeah. What about you guys? Let me know in the comments if you have any things that ways to deal with this stress. Okay. And let's do one more. Let's just do one last one. But if you have any stress ideas, please let me know and I'll write them down. Okay. Um, last one. Social media. This is an interesting one. Social media. How much stress does this cause you? Okay. So social media. So this involves, uh, let's see. So we got Facebook. We got Twitter. What else do we have? Instagram, absolutely. Good, thank you. Instagram. Yes. So how stressful are these for you? Is this very high stress, medium stress, or low stress? For me, personally, I don't get very much stress from social media. I, I like this, I don't use social media too much. I'll go on Facebook and read things, but I don't post much. So this gives me very low stress. Um, but what about you? Maybe it's different for you. And how can you work with this so that your stress can do go down? How do you make your stress levels go down from social media? Any thoughts or ideas? Someone said, take a break. Good. Yes, you could absolutely take a break. Yeah, maybe take a break. So that means don't go on social media for a while. Maybe like one day, two days, or like five days, or one month maybe. Don't go, don't use social media. Just put your phone away and do something else. The worst thing is to keep looking at your phone and your social media account because that's just going to make you more stressed. Any other ideas? Oh, someone said watch a funny video. Good, yeah, watch a funny video. So that can take your mind off social media. Watch a funny video. Any other thoughts? What else can we do? What can take your mind off of social media? What about deleting your account? Deleting your social media account. <laughs> This is, pretty dra this is pretty drastic. You're just like basically saying goodbye to all of your social media accounts. That's a pretty big step. But I do know people who have done this and they said it really lowered their stress levels. So who knows? Maybe it is a good idea. Okay guys, so I think we're done with this, the number two part. Now what we're going to do is I would like us to do the listening section, fill in the gaps. All right, so I wasn't able to set up the listening, unfortunately, so you're gonna have to listen to me talk. <laughs> so 
I'm going to read out the listening and I want you to listen and try and fill in the blanks as best as you can. The first time I'm going to read at a normal speed. The second time I'm going to slow down and we'll see if we need to do a third time or not. Okay, so let's erase the board and get ready. All right. Okie dokie. So, number one, we got number two, three, four, and five. Okay. So, some of these have two words, and some of them even have three words. Da, da, da. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, and one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so don't worry if you don't get all of the words the first time, because I'm gonna read it a second time and I can do it a third time if need be. Okay, so let's look at the title. Boys and girls react differently to stress. Interesting. Do you think this is true when you read this? Or do you think, nah, boys and girls, it's the same. They react to stress the same way. So, it's, but apparently, according to a study, boys and girls may react to stress differently. Why? Why do you think they react to stress differently? Do you guys have any ideas? Do you want to take any guesses? Why do you think boys might react differently to stress than girls? They both get stressed, absolutely. They do both get stressed, but it's different. Why do you think? If you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments. But we will find out in the reading why they react differently to stress. Okay, so I'm gonna start the reading. So get your pencils or typey fingers ready. And here we go in three, two, one. Boys and girls react differently to stress. A study from Stanford University in the USA suggests that stressful events affect the brains of boys and girls in different ways. Researchers say that girls suffer more after traumatic events and are more likely to develop post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. They also say that because of this, girls and boys should be treated differently by doctors during the recovery process from PTSD. Lead researcher Dr. Megan Klabund said, it is important that people who work with traumatized youth consider the sex differences. Our findings suggest it is possible that boys and girls could exhibit different trauma symptoms and that they might benefit from different approaches to treatment. The research focused on a part of the brain that deals with emotions and empathy called the insula. The smaller the insula, the more likely it is that someone will suffer from PTSD. Researchers discovered that the insula was particularly small in girls who had gone through a traumatic event. It was larger than usual in boys who had experienced a, dis a distressing, shocking, or frightening event. Post-traumatic stress disorder is a mental disorder that can develop after traumatic events such as sexual assault, warfare, traffic collisions, or threats on a person's life. Symptoms may include disturbing or suicidal thoughts, nightmares related to events, and alterations to how a person thinks and feels. Okay, so that was the first one. How was that, guys? Was it too fast or was it a good speed? So I'm going to read it a second time. And so for the second time, I'm going to go a little bit slower, okay? And I'm just going to read... I think I'm going to read up to the end of number, number six. Okay, I'm going to put number six over here. So we'll get half of them out of the way. Mm, doo, doo, doo. Okay, so. 
Okay, so I want you to pay particular attention to number one. I want you to pay particular attention number one to number six. Okay, so here we go once again in three, two, one. Boys and girls react differently to stress. A study from Stanford University in the USA suggests that stressful events affect the brains of boys and girls in different ways. Researchers say that girls suffer more after traumatic events and are more likely to develop post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. They also say that because of this, girls and boys should be treated differently by doctors during the recovery process from PTSD. Lead researcher Dr. Megan Klabund said, this is important that people who work with traumatized youth consider the sex differences. Our findings suggest that it is possible that boys and girls could exhibit different trauma symptoms and that they might benefit from different approaches to treatment. Okay, so that was the first half and I read it slower so that you guys could hopefully fill in the blanks. Now, I'd like you to start typing in the answers and I'll write them up on the board, alrighty? So what was number one? A study from Stanford University in the USA, blank, blank, stressful events affect the brains of boys and girls. So what was the answer for number one? Now, if you guys weren't able to fill in any of the blanks, let me know. You can tell me to read it again and I can go over some of the questions again, okay? But if you know the answers, try to type it in. So what was number one? A study from Stanford University in the USA, blank, blank. So I'll fill in the first two letters. Okay, so that's your hint. So 